take an English specialty with Bill Kelleher, the chef at Shermerhorn Seafood in Holyoke. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do, so we are going to make the traditional good old fish and chips. Fish and chips. And it's a perfect treat for the Olympics, you know, because they're in London this year. Absolutely. And what's some of your favorite parts about the Olympics? We, we enjoy watching the gymnastics. That's our favorite in reality. I mean, the basketball is nice, but you pretty much know the outcome. Exactly. That's and, good. The and, U.S. Uh, always does such a good job. Yeah, and watching some of the way that these girls go about the gymnastics and the floor routines and the balance beam and stuff, that just, that's thrilling I to think me. That's what I love about the Olympics, too. It's, it's these feats of strength and agility and grace that yeah. I could never, ever do. I can do those flips, but... You can? Yeah, not here. Well, we'll get you back in a couple of weeks. We'll have you do it after the Olympics are over. So, we are going to make some fish and chips today. What's the best kind of fish to use to make fish and chips? Uh, North Atlantic cod, haddock, that, that's the stuff that so, you want to use. That's your best tasting fish. It's the best frying fish. It flakes nice. It's got beautiful flavor. So, it really picks up the flavor of whatever you want to give it. So you want to do like a meaty white fish then? We yes, got that right and, here? Right. And, and I've taken the time to fillet these. If you're going to a fish market or wherever you go to buy your fish, you want to ask the gentleman behind the counter or the woman behind the counter, whoever it might be, to fillet the fish out for you, to cut the fish for you. They should be happy to do it or if you choose to do it at home. But I like to use a, a, a thinner piece of fish because it fries more evenly, it's quicker, it's not as long in the oil so you don't run the risk of uh, overcooking it. Whereas if you have a thick piece of fish, you could end up burning the outside, but the center's still a little raw. So when you go to work with these, and you're working with these today, so. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks for making yeah. them skinny. So hey, I made them a little thinner. Another question for you, you can sometimes go to seafood stores and buy it for an extra buck a pound, they take the skin off for you. Sure. Is it easy to take, well, you're probably biased because it's easy for you to take skin off something, but do you, should you pay that extra buck to have them take the skin off or can you do it yourself? Well, a good fish man would never ask you to pay an extra dollar to take the skin off. That's, That's an point. easy thing, but, but yeah, it is fairly easy. I mean, I could show you how, but it's quick. All right. It's quick and easy. Well, we have to come back and do that some other yeah. time, but for now, let's make some fish and let's chips. Let's make some fish and chips. So, take a couple piece of fish out. Okay. We've got one in the batter already. And then this batter, this is the first this is part. This just fresh flour. It's a, it's a full strength flour. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> and it moves well. Who would have thought? So if you just press it down, so kind of make uh, sure that it's totally coated in flour. So you're gently pounding it. Exactly. Kind of. Okay. And then just lay it right into the batter. And what's this batter made out of? And this batter, you, you know, I can't tell you what this batter is oh, made out of. I'm so but, sorry. But anywhere you want to go online, some people like beer batter, some people, uh, it's, a, it's a traditional pancake batter, really. Okay. And you make it as thin as you want your batter to come out of the fryer later. So if it's thicker, you're going to end up with a more of a, uh, a breading coat. Mm -hmm. If it's thinner, you're going to end up with a crunchy, thin coat of breading. Now, Bill, I'm not going to ask you for the special ingredients or anything, but for the most part, is there egg in there? No egg, no flour? egg. Flour? Flour, uh, 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 baking powder, so that you can get some lift out of your product. Mm -hmm. That's going to make it expand and bubble up. Oh. And then seasoning. Whatever seasoning makes you happy. I know some people have put oregano and, and uh, crushed uh, sun-dried tomatoes, so you got a Mediterranean batter. Some people use BBC beer, local companies, so they Ooh. have a beer BBC batter. Some people use Guinness. Seasoning can be whatever it was. You can put some cayenne pepper and some Cajun seasoning in there. You'll have like a, uh, a Mexican style fish and chips. So you can make fish and chips tacos. So whatever you like. Whatever you like. And, and I say that, and that the thing about cod and haddock is that the flavor is such that it will pick up the flavor of whatever you want to give it. Oh, okay. It's like a sponge of a fish. It is. And, right. and it's very, uh, you know, I mean, it's very mild and bland tasting in itself. Mm -hmm. Once you get these coated in flour, you just want to make sure you take your fork, and I would suggest using a good serving fork, or a, uh, mm -hmm. and just make sure that it's totally coated in batter. Do you need the, to let it the, sit there, the, or just no, seconds? No, not at all. Okay. The flour is going to make the batter adhere to the fish. Sounds good. So we have it all done here, and now what is the next step? Okay. <clears throat> I've got about a gallon and a half of vegetable oil. Oh, wow. That's a lot of vegetable oil. You want to make sure you have a good sized pot and you're only half filled. And if you take a look, it's only half filled. And the reason I do that is because you're going to get a little bubble up when you put the fish in. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure your fish is cold, make sure your batter is cold, all right? Your oil at 350 degrees and a candy thermometer, just insert it in. And I say between 350 and 360. You're going to drop off in temperature. Once you drop your fish in there, your temperature is going to drop down probably to 340. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you want to make sure that you're hot enough on the stove that your temperature comes back. You need to fry at 350 and we have a nice coat. All right. All right, so well, we're at 360. Do you mind That's if I start dropping them in? Well, let's do it this way. We'll oh, bring yeah. This over bring here. the batter to the oil. To That's it, right. And then, there, there you go. There we go. What I would suggest to you, yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. We'll just do a couple of pieces. Yeah, Maybe that's three. good enough. Yeah. But how long you want to put it in there for, Bill? 
You're gonna look at about four minutes to five minutes. Now, if you look at it, that's frying up really nice. It's got good temperature. Mm -hmm. And take a look at how the, uh, the, the batter is cooking up nice and crispy. Oh, it's crisping. Huh. Right, exactly. That's what happens. If your oil's not hot enough, mm -hmm. it will not do that. So you hey. gotta make sure your oil's hot. 350 to 360, I say that. And if you can cook in smaller quantities, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a better consistent product. So, what we've got now is we got some fish in this 350 degree oil. Uh -huh. You wanna make sure that every once in a while you take a pair of tongs or if you take a slotted uh, skimmer like I have there, uh -huh. and just turn them. You need about four minutes, four and a half minutes. And how can you tell when they're done? Is there a consistency level? Is it a color? For me, it's sound. I'm listening to the moisture cooking out of that fish. So when you first drop the fish in, if you remember, there was a, yeah. a big sizzle. Now we're quieting down, so most of the moisture is gone. When the moisture is gone, pretty much the fish is cooked through because moisture is what fish is made of. It's all water. Oh. All right, so we're gonna pull this out. So it's like you wanted to come to a simmer almost, like um, a simmer exactly, sound. Exactly, a simmer sound, right. And we're gonna take this out. You right. have to put it on some paper towel or some parchment paper, something that's gonna soak up a little bit of the oil because this is gonna be oily. There is a good amount of oil in that, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You're but cooking hey, in oil. That's the taste. It's though. fried food, baby. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it's all about. This fried is food. no low cal dinner right this here. This is not. But it's a tasty one. Sometimes you get people come into the restaurant and they say, Well, can I have it not so greasy? Well, no. if you want fried clam, yeah, that's exactly. what you got, man. If you want non greasy, go somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. And so, what you've done here too is you've paired it with some fries. Some fries. Now, did you make those in a similar method? Exactly the same method 350 to 360 degree oil. You can buy a frozen french fry, you can cut fresh fries. Certainly with all the farmland we have around here, you can cut some fresh fries, just julienne, cut them. Oh. Cut them into strips, cut them into potato chips if you want to do it that way, however you want to do it. Drop them in the oil. Usually I take and cook them off a little bit beforehand. How do you do that? Do you blanch them in like boiling water or something? Blanch them in oil. Okay. And then put them aside and chill them. And then drop them back in cold. And they'll crisp up just like a frozen french fry or a french fry at a restaurant, a commercial grill. And Bill, if you're preparing them for a party, you want it to look something like this. <clears throat> but also, if we want to do it traditionally, we've got some parchment paper. Well, we brought some London Times newspaper with us. I mean, how can you not? It's how can you not? Exactly. When you're over in England, what they do is their traditional fish and chips is served with fresh cut potatoes mm -hmm. that they fry off and they serve them with mashed peas. Now, a lot, of, a lot of times around here in New England, we'll serve them with coleslaw. And I think a lot of that has to do with the farmland because we're growing cabbage, we're growing all these fresh vegetables. So fresh cut potatoes, uh, coleslaw is a traditional New England thing with fish and chips and fried seafood in general. We'll serve a good coleslaw. Looks good. That's your fish and chip. Again, malt vinegar for your potatoes, some tartar sauce, which is, again, it's a New England thing. I, I don't know that you got much tartar sauce in England, but I'm sure some people do enjoy it, you know? <laughs> well, hey, I, thank you so much. This looks great. You. I cannot wait to dig in. So from tea and crumpets to fish and chips and even green salsa and chips, we've got all the Olympic recipes that we're making today on our website, mymassappeal.com.